What does it take to feel safe in your own city? On streets you know like the back of your hand when you've started to doubt the guardians of those streets, the very people meant to protect you. That's a question the women taking this martial arts class in South London have begun to grapple with in recent weeks and months. For the longest time I thought, oh no, but really I can go to the police if there's an issue. I don't feel that way anymore. Dasha works in international development. I kind of have to rely on my own wits and on my own ability to be aware of my surroundings and defend myself if I have to. So if you were in a situation where you saw a lone police officer and he approached you, <laughs> what would you do? Walk away. Really? Quickly. Yes. Scotland Yard, home to Britain's largest police force and one of the world's best known. The inspiration for countless fictional detectives bolstering a reputation seemingly etched in stone but no more. London's Metropolitan Police is a force in disgrace, accused of fostering a culture of misogyny so pervasive that it shielded sexual predators in its own ranks for years. Good evening. The case of PC David Carrick has shone a searing light upon yet more scarcely believable failings by London's Metropolitan Police. It doesn't get much darker than the deeds this now former police officer admitted to last month. 49 offences, including 24 counts of rape. Also shocking, just how many red flags were missed inside the Met. During his reign of terror, which lasted 18 years, the Metropolitan Police had nine opportunities to stop him and didn't. We're all equally horrified. The Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Mark Rowley, is under pressure. I've got tens of thousands of fantastic men and women, but I've got hundreds who shouldn't be here. I'm going to sort it out. What makes that promise so hard to believe for some is that it comes nearly two years after the arrest of another serving Metropolitan Police officer for the rape and murder of a young woman. Sarah Everard was walking home from a friend's house on March 3rd, 2021. CCTV footage tracked some of her journey. And a dashboard camera caught police constable Wayne Cousins stopping her on the street. He used his warrant card to falsely arrest her, citing a breach of COVID rules. He handcuffed her, put her in the back of a rental vehicle, and drove her to her brutal end, eventually strangling her with his police duty belt. It sent a shudder across the United Kingdom, an outpouring of grief and outrage. People gathered at this park, close to where Everard was taken. The crowds grew, even though COVID rules meant large gatherings were banned. And the police made a fateful decision to break up a vigil officers would later say had turned into an anti-police protest. They moved into the crowd with force, leaving in their wake some searing images. Patsy Stevenson found herself thrust into the spotlight, reluctantly so, her life transformed by the experience. She's now an activist, campaigning for change. The past two years, we've seen nothing happen. We've seen a lot of empty promises, but I've not seen a change at all. After Stevenson's picture was splashed across newspapers, she says she was trolled on a dating app. Men pictured in police uniforms liking her profile. And a few of them said in their bio, they said like, oh, I'm, I'm an officer with handcuffs and no, not the fluffy kind and things like that. I took that it's all taken a toll is clear. Now, I feel like exhausted all the time, but I think once you're in it, you can't really stop. It's like a need, like I can't stop fighting for women's rights and I don't think I ever will now. So where then lies the road to redemption for a police force with a reputation so tainted? It's not one bad apple, it's not a couple of bad apples. There are numerous officers and they need to be taken care of. The system just needs to be cleansed. 
Parm Sandhu is a former chief superintendent with the Metropolitan Police, rare for a woman of colour, she says. That David Carrick managed to abuse women for nearly two decades without someone blowing a whistle, especially when he was being vetted and promoted, is no surprise to her. They were either too frightened of him or they were part of his gang, his little group and culture. And the, unfortunately, the culture of the Metropolitan Police enables these sort of behaviours to go unchecked because the culture is keep your mouth shut and don't say anything. 30 years ago, a major inquiry into the Met's handling of an investigation into the murder of a young black man named Stephen Lawrence pointed to institutional racism. Sandu says force leaders are still in denial. The police service should be saying, right, we, ha we are racist, we are sexist, we are misogynistic. They're not. They're trying to batten down the hatches and they're being defensive. The Metropolitan Police say they are now reviewing more than 1,000 serving police and staff previously accused of domestic abuse or sex offences. Harriet Wistrich, a solicitor and founding director of the Centre for Women's Justice, says they must go deeper than that. It's accountability not just of, obviously, the officers who've committed crimes and so on, but it's accountability of those who have been bystanders, who've seen what's going on and let it happen. The leadership here at Scotland Yard continues to emphasise that the vast majority of police officers are good and true and to be trusted. So when I do that, flare up that they're going from. But the very real prospect remains that even fewer women will be inclined to report a rape or assault than they have in the past. Given that there seems to be such a high proportion of police officers in this city that are bad apples, it yeah knocks your confidence a bit in reporting things, I think. The man who was able to perpetrate that many crimes against women, how many people along that way covered that up for him? Well, his crimes are terrible but it's the institution that has actively worked to cover up his misdeeds so consistently for such a long time. That is the problem with the system. It's not safe for women. Up, push, down, here. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London.